Good morning, Pastor Brian here. Thank you for joining me today as we read a psalm a day throughout the book of Psalms. Today is Psalm 89, and it's a rather long one, so I'll be reading from the Common English Bible, and we're going to jump right into it. I will sing of the Lord's loyal love forever. I will proclaim your faithfulness with my own mouth from one generation to the next. That's why I say your loyal love is rightly built forever. You establish your faithfulness in heaven. You said, I made a covenant with my chosen one. I promised my servant David, I will establish your offspring forever. I will build up your throne from one generation to the next. Heaven thanks you for your wondrous acts, Lord, for your faithfulness too. In the assembly of the holy ones, is there any in the sky who could compare to the Lord who among the gods is equal to the Lord? God is respected in the council of the holy ones. God is awesome and revered more than all those around him. Who is like you, Lord God of heavenly forces? Mighty Lord, your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule over the surging sea. When its waves rise up, it's you who makes them still. It's you who crushed Rahab like a dead body. You scattered your enemies with your strong arm. Heaven is yours, the earth too, the world and all that fills it. You made all of it. North and south, you created them. The mountains Tabor and Hermon shout praises to your name. You have a powerful arm. Your hand is strong. Your strong hand is raised high. Your throne is built on righteousness and justice. Loyal love and faithfulness stand in front of you. The people who know the celebratory shout are truly happy. They walk in the light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long and are uplifted by your righteousness because you are the splendor of their strength. By your favor you make us strong because our shield is the Lord's own. Our king belongs to the Holy One of Israel. Once you spoke in a vision, to your faithful servants. I placed a crown on a strong man. I raised up someone specially chosen from the people. I discovered my servant David. I anointed him with my holy oil. My hand will sustain him. Yes, my arm will strengthen him. No enemy will oppress him. No wicked person will make him suffer. I will crush all his foes in front of him. I will strike down all those who hate him. My faithfulness and my loyal love will be with him. He will be strengthened by my name. I will set his hand on the sea. I will set his strong hand on the rivers. He will cry out to me. You are my father, my God, the rock of my salvation. Yes, I'll make him the one born first. I'll make him the high king of all earth's kings. I will always guard my loyal love toward him. My covenant with him will last forever. I will establish his dynasty for all time. His throne will last as long as heaven does. But if his children ever abandon my instruction, stop following my rules. If they treat my statutes like dirt, stop keeping my commandments. Then I will punish their sin with a stick and I will punish their wrongdoing with a severe beating. But even then... I won't withdraw my loyal love from them. I won't betray my faithfulness. I won't break my covenant. I won't renege on what crossed my lips. But my own holiness, I've sworn one thing. I will not lie to David. His dynasty will last forever. His throne will be like the sun always before me. It will be securely established forever like the moon, a faithful witness in the sky. But you, God, have rejected and despised him. You become infuriated with your anointed one. You've canceled the covenant with your servant. You've thrown his crown in the dirt. You've broken through all his walls. You've made his strongholds like pile a pile of ruins. All those who pass by plunder him. He's nothing but a joke to his neighbors. You lifted high his foe's strong hand. You gave all his enemies reason to celebrate. Yes, you dulled the edge of his sword. 
and didn't support him in battle. You've put an end to his splendor. You've thrown his throne to the ground. You've shortened his prime of his life. You've wrapped him up in shame. How long will it last, Lord? Will you hide yourself forever? How long will your wrath burn like fire? Remember how short my life is. Have you created humans for no good reason? Who lives their life without seeing death? Who is ever rescued from the grip of the grave? Where now are your loving acts from long ago, my Lord? The same ones you promised to David by your faithfulness. Remember your servant's abuse, my Lord. Remember how I bear in my heart all the insults of the nations. The ones your enemies, Lord, use. The ones they use to abuse every step your anointed one takes. Bless the Lord forever. Amen and amen. Well, that's the end of Psalm 89. What did you hear? What did you like? What didn't you like? What stuck out to you? Make sure to, to really think about that and, and write it down. It's always important to write those kinds of things down so that you can remember them. One of the things I wanted to point out about this psalm is that there are kind of three sections to it. So I'm going to speak a little more broadly today about the psalm. Uh, in the first section, which I believe is uh, verses 1 through 18, is a, you know, a joyful psalm in which it kind of talks about God's power and loyal love. We hear that word or that phrase repeated multiple times throughout this psalm. And so it's talking about God's love and God's grandeur and just everything God has done for God's people. And then the next section, which begins in verse 19, then talks about the covenant that God established with David and how that is uh, being maybe reestablished or just reminding both God and the people about that covenant that was made with David and that, that there would always be a king from the line of David on the throne forever and that that would always be the case that there wouldn't be a time when there wasn't and you know we as Christians uh, turn that into uh, or turn our eyes in that promise and that promise elsewhere on Jesus and Jesus being in the lineage of David and also God's one and only son and then the final part of the psalm is a uh, a lament, you know, wondering where God is, you know, has God abandoned us? Has you rejected us? Have you lifted up your enemies? And so we kind of have almost three different styles. You know, we talk about styles uh, every so often. We have three different styles of psalm all built into one psalm. And one of the things that I wonder is, you know, is, are the first two parts of the psalm a build up for the lament? as in reminding God of all of these things that God has done for them, and then saying, God, here's how we feel, though, at this moment. You, you are God creator. You've done these great and wonderful things. You, here's your covenant that you established with David and with your people Israel. Here's what we're going through right now and what we're feeling. However, unlike yesterday, if you joined us yesterday, it does in the end, verse 52, say, bless the Lord forever, amen and amen. So it does go back to that, that moment of hope, to that moment of trust in God. So I just really wanted to point those three sections out for you, and hopefully that kind of helps you uh, wrap your head around this psalm and helps you kind of figure out what, what it was that stuck out to you and maybe why it stuck out to you or help you understand uh, what this psalm is, is doing. So, again, write it down. Share it with a friend. Share it with us. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. And God bless.